Hey, coach, man, what time is it? Oh, Slim, you know what time it is. Six o'clock, stay up and down. It's Homespun Sports with Coach John Montgomery. Sports talk with a twist of down-home wisdom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad that once more and again, you've tuned in to Homespun Sports. It's Sports Talk. We just a little twist of down-home wisdom. I'm your host, John Montgomery, right here in good old Houston, Texas. My show, Nuff Partner, the last pin to share my Baby boy, what's up up there in Oklahoma in Dell City, Slav? What's cooking, dog? Yeah. What's cooking? What's cooking? Man, it's football season, coach. It's looking great. <laughs> How you looking? <laughs> oh, man. Man, it's football season, brother. And, uh, man, you can just, Slim, you can just smell it, dog. <laughs> and listen, Slim, I am so excited about our very special guest for episode number nine of Homespun Sports. He is an HBCU legend. Uh, he is a two-time pro bowler. This man, this brother serves, has the distinction of being able to say that he played in four straight Super Bowls. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, please make welcome How the House Ballad. Oh, yes, sir. How's my brother? How you doing, Coach? I'm doing good. Man. Yes, sir. Man. So are we. So are we. Man, Appreciate we are you being here. on the show, Coach. Thank you for inviting me. Del- House, we're delighted to have you, man. Uh, my brother, uh, it just means so much, man, with having you on our show, Alabama A&M. And uh, that's a place very dear to me. I cut my teeth there in coaching. And uh, you played there, man, uh, two Super Bowls, four, uh, well, two Pro Bowls and four Super Bowls. Man, what a career. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. It was fun. <laughs> Had an opportunity to uh, make a little money and pay, pay the bills. So, Howard, uh, from Normals Hill to the NFL, uh, pick 283 in the 11th round. Correct, yeah. I mean, coach. Heck of a journey, number one. Number two, thank you for for paying it forward for uh, being the head football coach at Fairfield High School. Offensive line coach. Offensive line coach, coach. Offensive line coach. Again, don't have to do it, but I know they appreciate all the experience. Well, at at, at times it seemed like they do, and at times the uh, offensive line don't seem like they don't. Yesterday we had a, a pretty bad game against Jasper. High school, we lost 34 to uh, 26. Had plenty of opportunities, but uh, the guys are getting better. They We're 0 and 4 right now, but uh, hopefully they'll get better. Such, such a great need, uh, Howard, at the high school level to be coached fundamentally. And your exposure, man, in the NFL, that's got to serve those high school kids in such great stead, man. No question. It, it does help a little bit. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of coaches uh, at the high school level practice like what you would think that the NFL, we, they do a lot of teamwork and not as much individual fundamental work as uh, you think they should. But uh, you just roll with the punches and try to teach what you can, when you can, and hopefully that the kids uh, will grasp the information uh, as well as possible to be able to regurgitate it out on the field in a game time situation. Howard, let's go back to Normals Hill, Alabama a and Yep. You, you played for my mentor, Ray Green, the great mm-hmm. Ray Green, uh, one of the unsung legends of HBCU football. How did Ray Green 
shape you and prepare you for the NFL? Well, uh, the opportunity, that not just for me, but the opportunity that he gave his coaches to go to the uh, Browns, the Bengals, and other teams through the uh, years to learn the different techniques that they use at that level and come back to teach not only myself, but a lot of other guys, uh, DB coaches, uh, going there and bringing that information back as well. Uh, just getting that opportunity to get that learning from him in that forefront of uh, that vision he had to get take well, Coach Lee, Coach Shavers, John Shavers, was a defensive coordinator back then. Absolutely. Uh, we had secondary Jeez. coaches like uh, Freddie Jones that went. Uh, Curtis Harris was the offensive line coach along with Coach Lee at times. So they all coming in teaching those uh, – different drills, the different fundamentals, using some of the uh, same terminology. So it, it made it a whole lot easier transition. Well, to, to, and to be drafted in the 11th round, now, Howard, I mean, man, you were a long shot. But, dude, you, Howard, you played, what, 12 years in the NFL? 11 years. Oh, 11 years. You, and, and my brother, you started 154 games, Howard. Right. I, few, I started uh, 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 going into my second year there at Buffalo. Wow. I was at Buffalo and five in Seattle. So I so had a lot of guys that uh, uh, that helped train, uh, helped train me and, and other guys while we were at Buffalo. Taught you how to uh, to uh, study film, how to prepare for ball games and stuff like that. Other players that uh, sooner or later you would possibly be taking their uh, spot because uh, Joe Devlin, which was was the right tackle for Buffalo, he uh, got drafted. I think first round draft pick in 1976, and this was in 1988. Uh, my uh, rookie year there, uh, we spent a lot of time together. I was his backup. Okay, so our. I know you follow the Bulldogs. I know you bleed maroon. I know you do. Man, the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs took, took a tough one on the chin last Thursday night against UAB. A mid-major. I get it. And I didn't expect Alabama a and to win the game. It's a mid-major. But mm. Howard, they averaged 2.5 per rush attempt. Mm. 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 I mean... Uh, what's your take on Bulldog football right now, man? Well, right now, uh, hopefully uh, the head coach and the offensive line coach, offensive coordinator get it under control. Coach Maynard, he, he do a pretty good job of preparing offensively, uh, even when he was at Winston-Salem State and at Hampton. So uh, I'm sure he'll get it under control and get it built back up so that when we get – Swap play that we'll uh, have some good showings there. That's uh, what I was hoping for. That, and that that's exactly what I was hoping for. Now they got Troy State this week. That's another mid major. Right. Yeah. Then they come back and they got Austin Pay. That's the home opener. You gonna be at that game out? Yes, I'm a season ticket holder. Been <laughs> one for for a few years, so I'll be at that game. You right gotta there, make that one. Right there in the beautiful Lewis Cruz Stadium, exactly. and. Uh, Hopefully, like I said, man, uh, hopefully uh, from the UAB game, they gain some some corrected. They say you make a big improvement from game one to game two. I get it. And so uh, what I'm looking for, man, to see that, that rush attempt, because you know how, when you can control the line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. you got a chance to control the flow of the game. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure that get it together. I hope. Uh, if uh, uh, against Troy, we should be able to run the football some too as well. I hope so. I hope so. Hey, so, Coach. Howard, man. So, listen, man. Uh, the Bills kicked off the NFL season in grand style, and mm -hmm. I know your heart's still in Buffalo. Thirty-one to ten. So, it what's your take on the Bills? I wasn't able to watch it. I wasn't able to watch it because we were playing last night as well, but. Uh, I, I did watch some highlights this morning before I leave going to work, and uh, they look pretty good. They look pretty they good. They did. 
Do you Super do you Bowl get good? back up? Howard, do you get Super back Bowl up good? for the for a reunion game, or, or do you get back up? Or do you still maintain that fellowship with those guys? Y'all had some great players, man. When you were there, uh, Cornelius Bennett, Daryl Talley, uh, of course, the great Hall of Famer uh, Jim Kelly. Do you get back often, Howard? No, I, I don't, because I coach football during uh, during football season, so I don't have an opportunity to go up. But uh, uh, we, I'm going to try to make a game this year, hopefully, uh, late in the season, since they have expanded the uh, schedule. And now they play into January and stuff like that. So hopefully they get a chance to go play, see them play at least one game. This 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 Josh Allen, man, he's the real deal, Howard. Howard yeah, sir. he's pretty good. He, he, he pretty good now. Now I know you because you protected the great Jim Kelly. Mm-hmm. But they they both very, very similar type athletes. This 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 Josh Allen man, he plays quarterback like a linebacker. And so did Jim Kelly. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. They have yeah. they have uh they have a mentality of a, a defensive player. Very, 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 very physical, man. Yeah, I, uh, I, I tell you, man, how <clears throat> I followed your career, man, and uh, one game in particular, I got a chance to see you at the bit in person. If you remember the 1989 AFC Championship. Now here and in Buffalo, they do say that this is shirt sleeve weather. Long sleeve shirt sleeve weather. I think it's cold though. I really think it's cold. You guys are playing the Cincinnati Bengals in the jungle. And uh, that was the game that Cincinnati beat you guys to go to the Super Bowl when uh, they met up with the 49ers and Joe Montana threw that touchdown pass to John Taylor in the end zone with less than mm-hmm. minutes to play. Weiss has just set a Super Bowl record with 12 catches. He's in motion. Montana, touchdown, John Taylor. That's true. Yeah, I remember that game. Unfortunately, I, I didn't start that game. That was that was my first year, the end of my first year in eight. Okay. Next year, which I started, we lost uh, in 90 to uh, the Cleveland Browns. But we had three uh, straight plays inside the uh, five-yard line and lost that at Cleveland. And then Cleveland right. on to lose the AFC Championship game against Denver that year. I was at that game, froze my buns off. <laughs> it, it was cold. Icky Woods was on that team. I yeah. coached Icky at Nevada, Las Vegas. He oh, invited man. me up to come to the game and insisted that I sit in that cold stadium. I froze my buzz off. I would have much rather been in front of a television, not stand in line to go to the bathroom. But as it is, I, I remember that. And that was a hell of a football game. It was. It was. We had an opportunity to win it. But uh, uh, that that day, uh, Cincinnati and Boomer Sides and the Sam Whites, they did a real good job. They did. The tank, uh, uh, we, that's when we first started running no huddle that year. The, the, the K gun, the K gun. What they what they call yeah. it? The K gun. K gun. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Howard, man, listen, my brother. Before we let you get out of here, uh, what's your take on the Bills this year? They uh, they came thirteen seconds last year from the mm-hmm. a, from the AFC Championship, but uh, they. Man, you can make a strong argument that they have the best quarterback in the NFL. Before we let you get out of here, what's your take on the Bills this year? I, I think that uh, Bills got a good chance of going to the Super Bowl. They uh, defense do real, uh, real good. Special team wise, they do real good, and that was uh, probably one of the major things that uh, we had back in the day. A real good defense, special teams were sound, and offense. Uh, picked up the slack when they had to. Boy, did they ever, did they ever. Howard, man, listen, I do appreciate it, Slim, and I are so grateful that you took the time out, man, of your busy schedule to come and share on our show. Absolutely. And, man, listen, I got a lot of friends that are going to be at that Austin Pay game. Please okay. convey my sincerest well wishes and the best of luck to Alabama A&M. Tell all my Bulldog comrades I can 
bunch of players I coach, man. <laughs> All right, we will. I'll make sure. And I know Thomas uh, Thomas Hopkins will be one of the ones that... T-Hop, man. Yeah, please give my best to Thomas, man. I, I know, you know, Tony Harrison. Right. He red. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Red will be there. That's my... He the bros. That's my dog. I know he going to be there. It'll be a lot of them there. That's the home opener. And... Uh, we pulling, we pulling for Alabama and M. Howard. And man, listen, man, God bless you and your effort at Fairfield High School, man. What you doing with those young men, man? All right. Well, thank you very much, and we'll continue to try to do what we can to hopefully uh, get some of those kids to be successful uh, as we have been. I know you will. I know you will, House. Hey, House, man. Thanks so very much, man. Thank you. We so appreciate much. you coming on, House. Yes, sir. All right. Take care of yourself, take care of my brother. Uh huh. Thanks. Wow. Paying it forward, Coach. Ain't no question, man. Ain't no question, man. That dude, man, got a wealth of, of NFL uh, knowledge and experience. And to be right there in Fairfield High School, man, Tim, Tim, you know, Fairfield now, Willie Mays, the great Willie Mays, Fairfield, Alabama. The Temptations, Fairfield, Alabama. Miles College, Fairfield, Fairfield Alabama. Alabama. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the great prognosticator himself to do his thing. <laughs> Slim picks him. Yes, Go sir. Ahead, All right, coach. So, Norfolk State, uh, Dawson Odoms. <laughs> It's going to take North Dawson Odoms. Dawson Odoms. Dawson Odoms. Takes Norfolk State, James Madison, take on Kirk Signetti. Uh, four years, 34 and five. Honestly, coach, I think, I don't think Norfolk, they, James Madison's too much, coach. They just too much. Yeah. Kirk Signetti, good football coach. We were together at Pitt way back in 1985. He was a GA for us. And Kirk's been around it for a minute. Uh, uh, Dawson, uh, He's been on the job there two years. Was a hell of a coach. Is a hell of a coach. Did a hell of a job at Southern. Now taking over that Norfolk program. Turning. Out. I don't think he's been that long enough to have James Madison. I got. I like it. Go ahead. Uh, Jackson State taking on Tennessee State Southern Heritage Classic. Coach TSU take. They lead the series seventeen to eleven. Thirty-two year history, but Jackson State has won the last two. Eddie George and Coach Prime. I'm going to have to take Coach Prime on this one, Coach. But Eddie George and Tennessee State did look dang well, Coach, running that football against uh, Eastern, Eastern Washington. Washington. Eastern Washington, Coach. What, what was it? 200 total, not 290 yards of rushing at 5.4 attempt. And, and, Coach, and you, Slim, you run the ball and, two times. It's first down. And Slim, the, uh, uh, Tennessee State put up 590 yards of total offense. Yes. against Eastern Washington. That's going to be, I'm telling you, Mildred, that's going to be Jackson State's first real test. And uh, uh, if Tennessee, if Jackson State ain't on the A game, they could get beat. It's right there in Liberty Land. They're going to play a game in the Liberty Bowl. The Southern Heritage Classic, that's going to be a heck of a football game. That look, I look for that to be a contest. Who you got? I will take Tennessee State just to go against you. Okay, because you know I was taking Coach Prime. All right, cool. Okay. All right, cool. All right. So, your boys, PV, Buck yeah. McDowell, going to Abilene Christian, uh, Keith Patterson, 1-0. and They beat Lamar last week. PV, 1-0. and Beat TSU last week. Beat him like a drum. Lamar beat – I mean, Lamar lost to Abilene. Abilene beat Lamar, Lamar 28-14, to Coach. But Abilene is at home. We said it on the show again, plenty of times. If HBCUs are going to have a chance, if they're going to get some respect, these are the type of football games they got to win. Bubba, you got to do what you did against Texas Southern. Run the football, and you're going to have a chance. Possesses nine tenths of the law, coach. I say Bubba McDowell gets it done here. Well, you know, I ain't going against Preview. I ain't going against Preview, and I ain't going against my my boy. Sam, my boy Ashton Green, one of my children, Gersh. one of my children, coach of the offensive line at Texas, uh, excuse me, at Prairie View, a good offensive line will travel. 
And so the, you're, you're spot on correct, Mildred. They have to do the same thing they did to Texas Southern. And I got prayer of you going there and doing that. No question. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackson and Gramlin, coach, going to uh, Northwestern. Oh. Both teams took a massive L last week, coach. I mean, just huge. Gramlin State lost to uh, – Got lost to the Red Wolves and Northwestern got lost their butt beat by Montana. Montana. Yeah, they lost to Montana. So <sighs> since it's a away game, coach, I'm gonna have to take uh, Northwestern on this one. I don't think Jack. I don't think Gramlin recovers from that uh, from that L that they took last week. You know, I never thought I would see today that I would say this, but I think you're absolutely right. Uh, the thing about it is Montana, and that's a good one, double A football program. But the the uh, the boys from Natchitoches, Louisiana, Northwestern State University, they that's their home opener. And I don't think Gramlin is strong enough of character, and I don't think they have the quality of talent to go up Dude. in Natchitoches on their home opener and beat. Uh, Northwestern State. So I'm like you, Slim. Uh, uh, I look for, for Hugh Jackson to take it on the collar and be 0-2 when they come out of Natchitoches. No question. So, Coach, uh, now that we done gone over the college pickums, okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of gravy. Now, you didn't have to meet, Coach. I'm going to give you just a little bit of gravy on top to go along you, with. <laughs> you want some gravy on top of the meat? Just a little bit, Coach. Just a little bit. I'm going to give you five pro games that's coming up, and I'm going to break them down for you give you, and tell you who's going to win them. Okay. Well, tell you, you bad. You bad. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, Coach, so so Sunday, Coach, we got the Bucks and we got the Cowboys. Tampa Bay and Dallas. Okay. In right. Jerry World. In Jerry World. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. Right. Cowboys right. are the home team. Mike McCarthy, is, is, this is a must-win season. I mean, that's the hottest seat in professional football. He's got to win. Oh, that wins, got a Slim? lot. I look for the Buccaneers to take this game, Coach. I don't think, I don't think it's right for 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 the Cowboys yet. Okay, okay, okay. Next right. game, Patriots and the Dolphins. Where is the offense going to come from from New England? I mean, is it going? Is it going to be Nelson Aguilar? Is it is it Jacoby Myers? Is it uh, uh, Devontae Parker? Hard to tell. They don't really have any offensive threats that strike fear in any kind of defense, Coach. Uh, Tua. Tua and the Cheetah. I mean, this is is this going to be y'all season? Who's going to miss who first, right? I say the Patriots take this game, Coach. I don't think that connection between Tua and the Cheetah are strong enough yet. It might cause a couple turnovers. Yeah, I think the Patriots take this game, Coach. Well, Bill Belichick took them to South Beach on Tuesday so they could get acclimated. Slim, they're two and seven now in South Beach. But if, if Bill Belichick, and I'm gonna say it right here on the show, if Bill Belichick makes the playoffs this year, this will be his best job of coaching ever. Because let me tell you something, you spot on Slim, they are bland as milk toast on offense. They got nobody to strike yeah. fear in you on offense. Yeah. But, but, but you got them beating Miami. Yeah. Ooh, okay, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, coach. Next game, we got uh the Jags versus the Commanders. Washington is at home. Okay, I'm taking the Jags on this, coach, just for a lot of specific reasons. But Washington can't even get their name right for a whole season. So, yeah. Uh, how good will Trevor Lawrence be? How much improved will he be with Doug Peterson's new offensive style? And Carson Wentz. Are we going to see any improvement from him? I don't think so in Washington. I think Trevor Lawrence has a better game, and I think the Jags win this one. I, that might be the best pick you have made so far. I, I like. I think you. I think you spot on correct with that. I like Sunshine. Sunshine. And, and I think he makes the big jump in year two. Uh, uh, they got. I, I, they got. Uh, uh, a good mix of veterans. Um, they got that Travis Etienne kid back healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. They 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 got Cam Robinson at the left tackle. They plugged in the Brandon Scherf at the right at the guard. I think they I think that O line travels, and I look for them to go up there and and beat Washington. That might be the best pick you made. You got any more? I got yeah, coach. I got two more. Chiefs uh -huh. 
and the Cardinals. All right, all right. All right, right. Big thing about this one, Coach, defense, because we both know these teams can score, right? My homeboy can put up points, so can Kyler Murray. Defense is going to be the name of this game. Okay. Did Kyler Murray study? This is something we're going to find out. Uh, and the new look offense, no cheetah. I want to say no problem for Mahomes, but this is going to be a good game. It's in it's in uh, Cardinal Stadium, but I still got the Chiefs winning this one, Coach. I think you're spot on correct, Sam. And I think and I think that's an excellent observation as well. Uh, the Chiefs are going to be, if you like sweets, you like them at the pie. When they had cheetah, they were cherry pie. Well, they ain't got the cheetah, but still going to be a good pie. It's not pecan pie, but I think you're spot on correct. I like Kansas City to go to Arizona and win. I sure do. Mm -hmm. Last one, Coach. Big mm -hmm. ticket game, Browns and the Panthers and the and the and Carolina and the Panthers. Ooh, <laughs> you might not like this one, Coach, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you anyway. I say Baker gets his revenge. Oh, it's your show, dog. I say it's Baker. I say Baker gets his revenge. He's been talking all kind of noise all all off season. No Deshaun Watson. Unfortunately, eleven game suspension. They are gonna start Jacob Brissett. And I think that's probably going to be their undoing. Baker Mayfield, they're going to inch this one out, Coach. It's going to be a tough game. The key matchup is going to be uh, between Ikem Okawanu, the tackle that the Panthers just picked up, uh, and Miles Garrett. Uh, it, also, and, and part of the, that's going to be one hell of a matchup because that might be the best edge bender in football against a rookie. If you're right, and we're going to chop this up now because you know I'm going to hold you accountable for this. If you're right, Christian McCafferty plays a hell of a game. The X Factor. If you're right. If you're right. If you're right. We'll Definitely see. the X Factor. Okay. Definitely. But All yeah, right. but uh, but but uh, I got the Panthers winning this one, coach. I got the okay. Panthers winning this one. Well, hey, bro. It's your show. That's okay. <laughs> Slim. Yeah. HBCU football week one is in the books. It is. What did we learn? What did we learn, Milton? That they, that hey, we are not ready for the respect that we are trying to get yet, and HBCU still got a long way to go, Coach. We 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 got some problems to deal with. <laughs> well, Slim, you know uh, the Labor Day Classic. The Labor Day I'm Classic. Number one. All right, I'm watching this game, and. Prairie View beats Texas Southern 40 to 23. And did not complete a pass. 17 points, two touchdowns and a field goal. Prairie View averaged six yards per rush attempt. Uh, uh, Clarence McKinney been on the job four years. Bubba McDowell been on the job six months. And you don't complete a pass? How somebody beat you? Two touchdowns and a field goal, and you don't complete a pass in four quarters, Milton. Explain that to me. I'll explain it. They ran for 388 at six yards per rush attempt, Coach, versus 106 yards at 2.8 per rush attempt. That's how you got your butt whipped right there. Slim, I, you know what, man? I watched that, man, and, and about Texas Southern. It's like Johnny Taylor said, you know, I feel sorry. I feel sorry. Hey, <laughs> Johnny Taylor, I feel sorry. Don't feel sorry, honey. Because <laughs> cause Slim, Slim, right now, if you look at TSU's schedule, okay, all right, if you look at T if you look at Texas Southern's schedule, they got North Texas this week, okay? Slim, it might be Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, and then they got Southern. They got, they got, they've got uh, North Texas. Then they got Southern, Eric Dooley in the house, newly hired, Eric Dooley in Southern. Then yep. they got Pine Bluff, okay? Yep. And that's week one. Slim, if you look at that schedule, the way that Texas Southern football team that I watched last week, it might be all the way to the first week of October before they get win a game. And if they don't beat, if they don't beat Pine Bluff, Slim, it might be Division II Lincoln for homecoming before they'll have a shot to win a game. Oh, God. I mean. Hey, you know what, Coach? The TSU football remind me of a dog chasing a car. <laughs> <laughs>
Do I really look like a guy with a plan? You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. <laughs> you, you, you ever seen it? You, 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 your dad, dad was a vet. Papa was a vet. So you've seen a dog chasing a car before. All confused. What happens when the car stops? The dog stops and turns his head. <laughs> Literally, when a dog is confused about what am I supposed to do next, he goes, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, Slim. And, and they're going to have some serious uh, uh, decisions to make come uh, the end of this football season concerning that Texas Southern football program. Okay. To get it right down to Slim, Daryl Asbury, fired for losing. Mike Haywood, fired for losing. losing. And now uh, Clarence McKinney. So, the, he, Slim, he'll have one year left on his contract at the end of the 2022 season. And TSU people got to decide, are we going to make a commitment to be good in football? They're already good in basketball. Are we going to be just be known as a, as a hoop school or if they're going to have a football program? Yep. The powers that be at 3100 Cleburne, they're fixing to be at the crossroads. <laughs> No question about it. No question. So coach, uh, Arkansas State and Grambling. What did we learn from that game? <laughs> 58 to 3. Uh, 572 yards of total offense versus nine first downs in four quarters. Man, Grambling had nine first downs in four quarters. Yeah, coach. Slam. Slam. More than that, Mildred, how about the Orange Blossom Classic? Oh, Florida wow. and m and Jackson State. So how, hold on. How is the number one team and the number two, the point differentials between the number one team and the number two team in HBCU football, you mean to tell me that's 56 points? That's that's how that's how good they are between each other. It's 56 I, points. I, you know, we got man, problems, coach. We got I, problems. I came, Mildred, I came away from that. People asking me, how good is Jackson State? And I truthfully can't tell you, I, I don't know. Because I show in hell ain't judging how good Jackson State is by what I saw against Florida A&M. No, I ain't no. no, Slim, Slim. Florida A&M, 1.2 yards per rush attempt. Are you kidding me? Come on now, dog. Come on, man. That is sad. That is One an indictment, coach. That's an indictment. That's an indictment against your offensive line, your offense. That's a, your whole team. I'm telling you, man, Jackson State, I said it earlier, I think we'll know about how good Jackson State is if they have a chance to go from number 19 in the FCS poll, if they have a chance to move up and be a playoff team by how well they ran the football against that, the average 4.0. Yeah. Now, that's better. That's better. So I saw some improvement. But I'm going to tell you something now. The Southern Heritage Classic going to be one hell of a football game. Yeah. Watch and see what I tell you. Last but not least, Coach, oh, Fred. Oh, Fred. Fred, come on now. You know this is a game. Fred McNair, you know this game you're supposed to win. Alcorn State and Stephen F. Austin, 27 to 31. Stephen F. Austin, 7.7 .7 yards per rush attempt at uh, 288 yards of, uh, of rush offense versus 3.3 .3 per rush attempt at 153 yards of uh, rush offense. And that was the ball game, Milton. And that was the game, Coach. And that was the ball game. We talked about that earlier. All corn, uh, uh, Jack Spink Stadium, Marino Chasm Field, that's an intimidating ball yard. And this was a game that HBCU football needed to gain that respect. But Stephen F. Austin, ranked number 10 in the FCS, they go there. And let me tell you something, Slim. A good offensive line travels. Travel. You hit Slim. I'm gonna tell you something, partner. You go up in somebody's ball yard and you rush for seven point seven per rush attempt. You know what that's you like, Hey, Slim. You know what that's like? What? You kick the door off the hinges of the front door. Kick in the door. You go in, open up their refrigerator, make you a sandwich, put your feet up on the table, eat the sandwich. <laughs> And throw the throw the rest of it in the trash and walk out the house. That's what that was. Exactly what that was. Hmm. 
that's yeah. that disrespect on a major way right there, Coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. No question. Mm -hmm. Now, Coach, in the NFL. All right. All right. Now, I made my pickings. I done made my pickings for the NFL. All right. But now, what I'm going to call the NFC West coaches, instead of where the wild things are. All right. I'm going to say where the wide receivers are. Okay. Because there's some good ones up there. Ain't I'm no talking question. about Cooper Cup, uh, Allen Robinson, Debo Samuels, D Hop. It's some ballers. It's some names, ballers. Coach. It's Tyler it's Lockett. Some ballers. Uh, and then in the AFC East, mm -hmm. I'm going to call this one Who Can I Run To? Who can I run to? <laughs> for, the for the Buffalo Bills. For the Buffalo Bills, Devin Singletary, uh, Miami Dolphins, Chase Edmonds. For the Patriots, Damian Harris. And for the Jets, Brees Hall. But again, everybody can be splitting reps. It's nothing solid right now. But I think for the AFC East, is whoever's going to come out of that division on top, probably the Buffalo Bills, who's going to run the ball better? Yeah. And and Buffalo slam average 129.9 per rush attempt. You can't do that, and they want a big one. But I'm watching this now. This was week one. As we move through the season, I'm going to be paying very careful attention to who comes out of that AFC East. I'm going to tell you something, Mildred. Uh, I think the AFC East is a race for who's number two. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to go on record saying this. I don't think the uh, New England Patriots make the playoffs. I don't think so. They're too bland at the skill positions. But I'll tell you another thing, Slim. Okay. A team in that AFC East, call me crazy, you better watch them Jets. Thank and you. Gonna, yes. And, I, and I'm going to tell you why. All right. With the Jets, it's just a matter of how soon their good young players mature. Mm -hmm. They got that boy Jermaine from mm -hmm. State. He's a big time rookie. They got that. They might have had the best wide out in the draft when they took that boy Garrett Wilson from uh, Ohio State. Yep. They, they might have taken the best cornerback in the draft. Oh, in, in that, thank you. In that boy Sauce Gardner. They got a nice mix of young veterans with yep. uh, with C.J. Mosley, uh, Quinnen Williams, yep. and that boy Carl Lawson. Carl Lawson. Thank you. So uh, now, Coach, cut, cut, funny thing about the about the young old veterans that you say, they all from the SEC West. They are <laughs> two of them from two of them from Alabama and of them from Auburn. So they, they play, play each other all the time. This no ain't nothing question. new for them. No question, no question. Uh, in the in the a in the uh, in the NFC West, Clem, that's a division that had three teams make the playoffs last year, and it could and it could very well happen again. My thing with that division is if the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan saying so profoundly this is Trey Lance's team, then why did you pay Jimmy Garoppolo seven million, six point five of it fully guaranteed? Huh? Insurance, coach. Insurance. Because you know what you can get with Jimmy Garoppolo. The 49ers are a NF are a are a Super Bowl ready now team, coach. Yes, yes they are. Yes, and they, they are. have proven that they can go to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. Yeah, but you didn't yeah. already say you don't want to look like a, you know, a renege going back on my word. I already said I gave the team to Trey Lance, but I got a pretty good insurance sitting on the bench for seven million dollars. Absolutely. Now I'm gonna tell you something else too, Slim. Before we get out of here about the AFC West, it ain't no secret. Last Sunday in the NFL, the following Monday is what is known as Black Monday. True. Okay, that's when the axe drops, head coaches get fired. It's a transition business. We know that going in. But I'm going to tell you something, Slim. Every now and then, somebody gets whacked before the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Okay? Pete Carroll could be that guy this year. Yep. And I'll tell you why, Slim. Ain't no way on God's green earth you're going to make me believe that you're going to navigate the NFC West, okay, with, with Geno Smith. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, that ain't happening. And let's be honest with you, Coach. Let, let's be real here. They never really recovered from that else from Super Bowl 50. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. 
They it's never really right. recovered from that, Coach. Anybody with a brain, anybody with a brain would have said, hand it to Marshawn, let him run one yard in, and you win the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, and you're spot on correct, Sam. You are spot on correct with that observation. They never have recovered from that. And now you ain't got uh, uh, Russell Wilson. You ain't got Dwayne Brown. I mean, that's a franchise that's, that's, that's on shaky ground any way you cut it. Sam, uh, I'm going to tell you, man, Pete Carroll might not make it to Black Monday. No question. I don't think he will either, Coach. I don't think yeah. he will either. But uh, it's supposed to be in the studio, Coach. Oh, man. <laughs> man. I knew, man. Howard Ballard, man. We just, we rolling them with these guests, man, Coach. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah, man. No question about it, man. No question about it. House, man, we appreciate you and all the best to you. And we just, uh, for the effort, what you're doing and, and, and coaching those young men at Fairfield High School, my brother. God bless you. Hey, go Alabama and them Bulldogs. Let's go, Normal Zeal. Hey, Coach, tell my mom I love her, all right? I will do just that, my brother. Give my best to everybody up in Dale City, Oklahoma. No question. No question. No question. Mm -hmm. And finally, four head football coaches at the University of Arkansas since 2013. But there is a shift in the atmosphere in Fayetteville. The Razorbacks got it right this time with the hiring of my friend, Sam Pittman. Sam Pittman, number one, is one hell of an offensive line coach. But both he and his wife, Jamie, are first class people that have never met a stranger. And Sam Pittman can convey. And more than that, he can recruit the good black athlete to Fayetteville, Arkansas. And that is not an easy task. Whoopee! Suey! Go get a pit dog. And hey. That's how I see it. Six o'clock, straight up and down. Hey, look, that's how we see it, and that's how it is. You better believe it. Thank God. Thank God. We get to do this again. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much for tuning into this week's episode of Homespun Sports. Sports talk with a twist. Just a twist. Just a down tweet. home wisdom. Howard Ballard, thank you so much, sir, for being a part of our show today. We appreciate you so much for being our special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, don't miss this episode. We want we want you to be the first people to see it. It's gonna be on Homespun. It's gonna be on YouTube. It's gonna be on Spotify. And it's gonna be on our hard radio. Make sure you tune in. And hit that subscribe button. Hit that button. Word. You heard it. You heard it. Hit the button, hit the comments, hit the like, and support the channel. Hey, Coach. Yeah, my brother. Go ahead and get up out of here, man. Yeah, but before we get up out of here, rest in paradise, Coach Guy Morris. Hell of a man. Hey, what he said.